Okay, let's go uh, and hope that we'll get some assistance. <sighs> but yeah, this is what I was thinking that if I had found a plastic pack somewhere, but don't know where I would find one, but maybe somewhere. The coffee is in the giant thermos, this is still lukewarm. Lukewarm coffee. Is there made of pallets leading up? Okay. Oh, fish. A taxidermy fish that tells time. Hello, mister. Edward Claire. Before you is walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Say nothing. Look him dead in the eye. The one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy left eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Keep staring. <laughs> At first nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his shops, it's going to be a good one. So... He begins to speak, albeit very slowly, purposefully leaving a pause after his opener. Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debargeurs Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Yes, yeah, very nice to meet you. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny folding chair opposite to his giant desk. The folding chair looks like a torture device, extremely uncomfortable. Good to know. You go ahead, detective. The lieutenant nods at you, then the chair. Uh, whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. <sighs> Forget about that. What's with the Du Bois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Hmm. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Du Bois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. But apparently our name is Mr. Dubois. He is trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Hmm. Should I sit or should I not sit now? That's a great freaking question. I have no idea. <laughs> then just leave. Yeah, that, that would be useful. <sighs> to sit or not to sit? Should I sit? Should I not sit? Should I sit? Should I not sit? Should I sit? Should I not sit? It's besides we wouldn't be equal. He has a giant share. Giant share. I wouldn't have a giant share. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple shins move like ocean waves. I too have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage any man who won't face me at high level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. Okay. Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Remain standing and don't go anywhere. Everett starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you. Or will you out of existence. Stand strong. The lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or boredom. I see you're an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. That ain't necessarily a bad thing. Finally, the big man looks you in the eye and speaks. 
You did it! This might help against whatever comes next. Hopefully. So tell me, how can the head of the Debarges Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Garte. Some people have no manners. Pains me to say. I guess, like, this was the inn owner, I think. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novel de check on his desk. It's absolutely, comically huge. Uh... It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with the cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. Well, that would be very nice of you. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could know of him for. This is a trap. Wait, you know Cart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Do I want to owe him for later? That's the problem, I guess. Yeah, that's like too, too good money. Ah, uh, this is trap. Yeah. Keep it. I'm good. Thank you, but... Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks future into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Okay, well, that's uh, uh, good and bad to know. Lost gun. Lost gun. <laughs> His slug like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. Damage morale. Half light f f succeeded apparently. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational lost and gone. Okay, well, sure. I would appreciate any help you could provide in finding my gun. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Well, don't be. Everything's going to be all right. Is my name really Harry? It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Hey. I like wondering, should I try this or should I not try it? At least you're not sitting plus one to this check, but uh, it's extremely unlikely to be able to succeed. So... Uh, sure, let's try, but probably won't work. No, let's talk to Kim. Kim, um, Kim. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Claire's help with this. Okay. I wouldn't be so sure about that. He says as though to himself, composure, challenge, and don't panic. Yeah, I'm not surprised I didn't fail, uh, succeed with this. God, you're sweating, your knee is jerking, you're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. No, I am not about to cry. Try to stay cool. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. Damn it's morale. At least I have more morale to lose. <sighs> what is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry! The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect. You are in some stupor. Keep standing there, probably like a man-shaped jello shot. While Everett is distracted by your odd behavior. I'm glad that this at least succeeds. The lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. That's good. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? 
Are you having some kind of medical emergency? <laughs> Maybe you could use your hand somehow. I'm kind of drawing motion, like you're drawing that Mr. Dubois act l uh, right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Mm. Actually, I really could use that glass of water straighten out. What an odd demonstration of... Huh? You got me, Harry. <laughs> I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Okay, thank you, Kim, for stepping in. It's about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Okay. You called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course, let us disperse with the formalities. You call me Evert, I call you Harry. That's what the hand corpse called you, Harry. So that's really my name. My cause, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesic cop, aren't you? He shrugs with an amazed expression. What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that, he looks at you, are very low. My memory is just totally fine. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. He pats the brown folder in front of him. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words fall like a river of honey from his lips. Indeed, his testinance with all sort of bribings. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects Everett over his spectacles. Mr. Kids Rocky, would you mind? His eyes never leave yours. Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. read shipping folders before sure but i i still have an extremely low chance of doing this even remotely where did you get that folder ah this he closes the folder my friends in your organization gave it to me harry i find that very suspicious may i have a look I'm afraid this is meant for unionize only, Mr. Kitsuraki. I'm sure you understand. He turns back to you. Please continue, Harry. I was hoping this would work. Kim suspects something. But it's probably still not gonna be working out. So sure. I have another look at the folder. I'll try my best. Fail still. Everett's large hands are covering the folder, but he looks on his face. Look on his face says, "I know everything about you, Harry. I've got nothing to hide." Then, oh, Harry! He peeks into the folder as if it's hard to turn away from the mysterious inside. Oh, wow! This is really something. I am sure it's not that bad. The lieutenant whispers. At worst, he has an old RCM folder, and I am very much doubt even that. I very much doubt even that. So how about it, Harry? He leans back in his chair. You need assistance, I presume? No. No. Other matters for a moment. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on a person with details and amnesia. You wanted something from me? Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Honestly, I didn't want to bring it up, Harry. I heard you have become measure heads race pupil. It was a tactic. I needed to get in somehow. It's not like I'm a racist now. 
Of course, Harry, of course. You're not some kind of fantastic racist now. And rest assured, no one's gonna hear about it. He winks at you. No one's gonna know what you did with race there, Harry. Your race bonanza is safe with me. Word of how race it got will never leave Martinez. Anyway, I assure you, I'm very well informed, man. Information rinses me before I even get the chance to request it. Amazing. So, could you help me get the dead body down from the tree? It's a very important question, though. But, yeah, I'll ask that first, just to make sure. You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my, he smiles pleasantly. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Say nothing. I won't say anything more yet. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up the hat, handset of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. John, look, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And John, please take it easy with the race signs. He has, he's had enough of that. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find John look down at the gates, but he smirks. You already knew that. Anyways, he's going to help you. Great. So, I wanted to talk about the hanging, otherwise... Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. He nods. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you. Like I'm helping you with the body. Secret that's complete interview to Union boss. I mean, it's no secret that the luncheon is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been feying on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good, the lieutenant says with a slow note. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. Suddenly he slaps himself on the forehead. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. I've opened a few doors in my life. And I am sure you're gonna open this one with flying colors, Harry. He chuckles. This really is very simple and there's nothing shady about it. So, why don't you just open it yourself, then? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. He slams his wits together. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuraki, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help, he turns back to you. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no, who wants it? It's just a weasel, a weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about, as in uh, uh, someone that has been telling about his secrets or something. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. 
Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden, me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. He puts his glasses back on. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, he sinks deeper into a chair. I am what people call a local pickwick. I know everything that goes on in Martinis. I can't accept this task, refuse the task for now at least. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Ever worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do, he winks at you. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. The lieutenant says, yes, we both understand what you meant. <sighs> this may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you, in fact, we probably should reconsider later. Yeah, so he's kind of reconsidering it too. Well, I'll at least ask first, what's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Kvalsun crane. Harry, you smooth talking son of a bitch, he says with the fondest of smiles. Time is a precious resource and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you smooth talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. <laughs> <sighs> My god. My god. I don't like this guy at all. Yes, you're lost, gun. His first answer. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, so see every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that, he winks at you. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Hold on, could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Does this mean if I do things for you, I will get my gun back? <sighs> Track down your gun. Well, that's kind of done. Damn it, Harry, that's exactly what it means, he turns to Lieutenant. I am only kidding, of course. Of course, the lieutenant replies dryly. I understand. We help you, you help us. Yeah. <sighs> Fine, I guess I have to accept the task. At least for now, and maybe when I'm in that place, I can change my mind, but... Well, I'm reconsidering opening the door you asked me to open. Perhaps it will help me somehow. A fantastic change of heart, Harry, he rubs his nose. Go talk to Manana down by the gates. He'll brief you and give you the key. Just open one little door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want this weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything else we should discuss? They can't really do anything else there other than, uh, like, let's hear it, Harry. Well, I might as well ask, let's get this straight. What is my full name, then? It's Harry. He glances at the folder. Harry Du Bois. You feel like Du Bois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. I feel like Du Bois, but not quite like a Harry. Something longer. 
Sure, okay, you're Harold, Harmon, Haroldemus, but that's not what the record says. The record says Harry to boys. He taps on the folder, a real man's name. The lieutenant covers his face and sighs audibly. <laughs> Mr. Kitsuraxi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. He frowns at Kim. I, however, wish to help you in any way I can. I won't ask you any more questions, Everett. I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Oh, wait. He leans Risen into his drawer and pulls out a plastic card. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. Wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Union card. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. I hate you, man. I hate you. But what can we do? I don't like you one freaking bit. Not in the slightest. I wanna get you. And to be honest, I think it was indeed his man that had done it and who he sent away. Those are the guys who had committed the murder. So... Very, very likely, at least in my eyes. So... Ah, god damn it. Well, let's get out of here. How did I do this? Guess through here, yeah. Moving too quickly through the world. Wait, the door to open. That would be quite something if I could do that. <laughs> Smooth talk it open. <laughs> uh, funny though, that there's just an option. Indeed. If only I had more rhetoric. But sadly, that is not the way it is. Well, I think I have to try to ask my police station if I could get some extra money. Because that would be definitely helpful. Extremely so. Because I kinda... Yeah. After. Not long after. So if I wanna be hoping to do that, I would have to go there first. Uh, though I would also need to ask to get the body down. And just so much stuff I would have to try to do. But I guess the money issue is the first one if I wanna try to sleep there tonight. Well, at least I got there and can go there whenever I wish again. Okay. Yes, sir, we Radio. Can you connect me to the first, the 41st again? Just a moment, officer. Yeah, I... Then for coming officer over, I would be in dire need of financial assistance. Then four, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... What does he want now? He is asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything, he's just gonna drink it all. Uh, alright, the operator turns back to you. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. It's uh, paramount to the investigation that you can't be more money. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Uh, Records denied, sir. Over. Okay, I heard you. No funds. Anything else, sir? Over. Fine. End the call. Roger. 1010. Over and out. With those words, the captain becomes silent again. Okay, let's just touch his freaking steering levers. The white shoe wheels luxuriously under the touch and metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Gotta be having been driven this before. Tap on the fuel preheater gorge. As you tap on the gorge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's the, in the large orange sector indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gorge is a red switch labeled heat. No, no. That's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they're mesmerizing. They're also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. That's okay. Close the door. 
Well, if I try to get the body down still tonight, then I would have to go, uh, like, trying to think, what should I try to do first? If I at least could give some money about uh, to that place, then maybe I could try to stay there. But, uh, like, uh, then I would need to go and try to sell something more. If I would in any way hope to be able to afford to stay there even one more night, so could I just quickly sell you something? Hello again. How can I help you? Um, sure, I'd like to sell some of my clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothes at the moment. He looks at you up and down quietly. Um, well, then other stuff. This specifically. At least I can sell this one photo. If nothing else, at least that one. Um, okay. Just like trying to do a lot of stuff before it comes to nine o'clock. <sighs> At least I have a little bit of money. 16 real. That's not enough by any means, but at least I have 16. <sighs> Scavens everywhere. I could try to be asking these guys, but it feels so wrong to ask money from these sort of guys. And I haven't drank my money. That's the sad thing, kinda, in this situation. When the reason that he doesn't give me, provide me with extra funds is that I would just drink it all. And I haven't done that. So, kinda sucks. Kinda sucks. To be continued with Kidarusha next time in Disco Elysium. See you all then.